So what's up guys, I've been gone a while. Uh, the people we talk about, uh, the people we research are actually very secretive. So research takes some time. So now I have come back and we're going to talk about someone who is also as secretive. Today we're going to talk about Ikshan David. He was born in the Kenningston area of the Cape Fred. Ikshan was born in the early 1960s to a name by the name of Frank Sidney Davids. Now Frank was a trader by profession, or rather Frank himself was said to be Cape Town's very first pickpocket. So that is Ikshan's father. Now, Ikshan was one of eight of Sidney's kids. And there are two brothers of his that followed this uh, unhealthy trend. Now the first is Jerome. Jerome was actually an armed robber. He was actually attributed with robbing a string of filling stations from the west coast in Cape Town all the way to Mazenbeck. Now this guy was unfortunately shot in 1983 outside the courthouse. A rival gang actually showed up and shot him. Now Ikshan going to gangs was not actually his um, preferred destination. It's just that his household was very strictly Muslim so he chose to go with the gangs. Now that gang in the 70s that was called the American Jokers. Now the American Jukas were created by a guy named uh, Shaib Benjamin. Shaib Benjamin was a friend of his brothers and Ikshan joined them. Now the American Jukas were extremely ruthless. These guys, in those times, they didn't have easy access to guns like they do now. So they use spades. Spades. A spade is a shovel in some other countries. They used axes. They used um, pangas, what in other regions is called the machete, they used them. So you can imagine coming against those guys and of course they used knives. Now they were also extremely territorial to the point where they even owned certain ten slots. The train that specifically left Cape Town at Cape Town Station at 10 past 1 was extremely uh, exclusively owned by the, 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 the American Jokers. If they find any rival gang members in there, they gave them one choice. Get bludgeoned or jump off. Both of which were very hard choices and the corpses usually look very ugly. But that was the case. Their dress code had to include U.S. flag somehow. Now moving on to Ikshan's other brother. His name is Clinton Davids. Clinton Davids was with a couple of friends and they were just strolling in one of the upscale suburbs of Cape Town where they met an actor by the name of, uh, of Brad Goblin and who, who was working with his friend Richard Bloom. They hijacked these two guys and they took them out. I think they wanted to just uh, harass them a little and take their money and then let them go. But then they got spooked somehow and they ended up killing those two guys. So now Clinton is serving, I think he's currently serving uh, his life sentence. So in South Africa, life sentence is something like 25 years. So he should be eligible for parole. Uh, or he should have been from 2020 eligible for parole. So that is Ikshan's other brother. Now, all this, if you're interested in that case, you can follow or look up uh, the murder of Brad Goblin and Richard Bloom in True Crime South Africa podcast. That is hosted by Nicole Engelbrecht. So that is that about Clinton Davis. Now, Ikshan, okay. the transition between the Americans and the American Jokers. Because the Americans as a, as a gang was formed in 1983. So 
by then Ikshan was still part of the American Jukas with his brother. So the Americans were formed in 1983 by a guy named Neville Harold. Now Neville Harold lived in Belgravia Estates in the Athlon. At some point, Ikshan transitioned from the American Jew cast. Maybe it was after 85, after his brother was shot when leaving the courthouse. He transitioned to Americans. And in and around 89, he started getting noticed by the law. And in 1991, he was sentenced to seven years for manslaughter. So in between 1989 and 2014, went to jail five or six times and then there are others that he beat like people suspected that he was uh, selling mandrax uh, selling teak and uh, selling um, abalone just like in mexico you know in mexican gangs they are now hijacking the sales of avocado so similarly in cape town the gangs are hijacking the abalone um, fishing he is still a free man as we speak. However, in 2007, he, like Jerome Donkey Boyson, dodged a hail of bullets in public in broad daylight. After that, he committed to leaving the Americans. Ikshan actually said it in, I think it's one of the YouTube videos, uh, that actually, when you reach a certain level in the in the gang culture in Cape Town, you can actually walk away. But actually, when you are needed by the gang, you have to suit up and come. So the slogan of the Americans is, in God we trust and die we must. He went out gracefully. The leadership of the Americans let him go. Also, I also understand that it happens even in the numbers gangs. When you reach a certain level in the gang, you can leave. So guys, that is all we have on Ichan, one of the members or senior members of the Americans. And I hope to see you again. Remember to keep sharing, liking and subscribe. See you next time.